It's 5 a.m. I just woke up um, maybe 15 minutes ago. And as I'm lying here, it hit me. Um, lately, I've been noticing how, you know, it, communication is, is, it's amazing that we ever understand each other at all because two people can be talking about the exact same concept and not realize it. Um, the Neville Goddard concept of revision is, it's the same thing as what I've been talking about on my, in my videos about uh, changing your beliefs. And um, <clears throat> I didn't realize it because, uh, you know, my process is slightly different than the Neville process, which is basically to go back to a scene uh, or, you know, an event or something like that and basically rewrite it in your mind, um, experience it differently, imagine it happening the way that you would like it to have happened. Um, and I did this, I did that with some things and it, there was a sort of immediate improvement about how I felt about it. But I realized that my process for changing my beliefs about myself is essentially the same thing with like a slightly different twist or a slightly different um like I don't just go remember it I actually try to figure out what was going on there and how I decided something about myself from it so basically what I've been doing to change my false beliefs and, and I think you really have to um, accept, you know, you have to sort of take it into your heart. You have to believe, um, buy into the idea that your base state is blissful, like a baby. Um, you know, if a baby is comfortable and, you know, its basic needs are met, it will be joyful. If it's not in physical pain, it will be happy. That's basically you. So, um, you know, if you accept that premise, then everything that makes you not feel that way is due to something you're thinking that is wrong, false. The false beliefs are what create the negative feelings. And so whenever I get a negative feeling about anything now, especially since I'm used to, I'm getting more and more used to just being in this state of bliss all the time. Um, when I get a, a bad feeling, it can always be traced to a belief. And when I, it's like, it's like a game for me. It's like a puzzle at this point. I mean, it's not always the best feeling thing to be doing, but you know, it, it is a riddle. It's, it's like a, um, you know, it's a, it, it's sort of like a puzzle to be figured out and put the pieces together and then bang, when you're done, you're happy. That's the reward. So, you get the feeling and it can be hard to kind of distinguish what the feeling is at first. Sometimes it's just, sometimes it's sadness. Sometimes it's depression. Sometimes it's loneliness. Um, sometimes it's anxiety, fear. Those are like the big catch all descriptors, but you can always break it down farther. Um, you know, I'm feeling anxiety. Why do I feel, um, you know, that, I'll never be good enough. Do I feel like something bad is about to happen to me? You know, you can kind of break it down further. And as you sort of go down at the bottom will be something that you believe. Um, and sometimes something that you believe that's false is multifaceted and it'll have a couple of different ways that it comes out at you um, to make you feel bad. And if you can keep going down and resolving, then you know, eventually you resolve the entire false belief and it just falls away and it doesn't come back. So my process has been, I notice that I'm not feeling happy and that it's stuck around for more than a minute, let's say. It's kind of like hanging over me. Try to identify 
in more detail what that feeling is. Where did that feeling come from? If I can identify the belief, then it just becomes a, uh, um, a matter of trying to determine where and who that came from. If it came from an incident, many of the things that I have um, so gone through this process on over the last couple months have come down to a single comment um, that somebody made that instantly changed how I thought about things. And the thing for me is that um, these comments are not like, uh, you know, I had a reaction at the time usually to, so like if you go through all of the things that you can think of that somebody said to hurt you, um, or not to hurt you, but that said, you know, and the result was that you felt hurt, um, you know, everybody's got a few that they can remember because they were so impactful. And maybe you don't remember having a huge outward reaction at the time, but if you can remember a comment, it it did something to you. Um, even if you didn't, this, this is my, this is my theory. It's been true for me. Um, you know, like in your life, the people you're close to, there's probably a, like my mom, my dad, other people, they'll tell like the same story over and over. Like, you know, I've heard certain things from them over and over throughout my life. And I, and I was thinking about this in the last few days and I'm like, wow, those are the things that really impacted them. Like my mom, who is very intelligent, um, distinctly recalls something a teacher said to her. Um, oh, and I can never remember. It's so good. Uh, like somebody said to her that her stupidity was offensive or something like a like a fifth grade math teacher said this to her and and she's a fifth grade teacher she was a fifth grade teacher um you know these little comments that get made they work their way in and you know of course she's laughing about it when she talks about it but like that obviously affected her greatly at the time. I don't know if she sort of thought about that over the years and was like, what a jerk or, or what, but, or if it actually is still impacts her, I don't know, but it's things like that where you can go back and think about the thing that was said and figure out what conclusion you drew about yourself from it. Um, you know, depending on what your state of mind was when certain things are said to you, you can take that and go, wow, um, there's evidence that I will never, ever be good enough right there. And, oh, well, I'm a positive person about life. You know, uh, got to take, you know, the hand you're dealt. Uh, got to do the best you can with what you have. It's too bad that I'm not good enough. I'll try to make good with this life anyway. Um, <laughs> you know? That little thing that I just said is a destructive thing to, that is a bad conclusion masquerading as a positive can-do attitude. It's the things like that that you can go back and say, no, uh, the base premise that my intelligence is, you know, my stupidity is offensive, uh, that was an utterly, you know, you can go back to that moment and sort of go, oh, okay, I see where this came from. This moment was an absolute load of shit. <laughs> and I see now that there is no power in that statement. That was an idiot teacher who, you know, for example. Then as you go through this process of feeling the emotion, whittling it down further to a much more specific emotion, you know, going, uh, figuring out what belief it is and going, hopefully going back to the scene where it happened or, you know, as close as you can get. Then as you go through that process, the next time you feel that feeling, it's not just going to be a feeling of 
generalized, I'm not good enough. You're gonna recognize that it's the feeling of that experience. Like I was noticing this yesterday, my emotional, my emotions are becoming much more distinct as I do this. I'm not just feeling a general feeling of unease. I'm feeling a specific type of unease that goes back to a belief. And if I've unraveled it, then you become conscious of it and you feel the feeling. And then this process becomes like almost instantaneous and you go, okay, whew, and it's gone. You're back to bliss. Um, so that is essentially revision, just with a slight twist, different language, um, so that hopefully some people understand, you know, the variation on the concept, but the overall revision concept is essential. It's core. So I hope that illuminated something for someone.